Hello dear young friends the song of the open road was written by Sir Walter Whitman aka Walt Whitman it is a pian a pian means a song written in praise or appreciation this poem is written in free verse and it is an ode to himself Walt Whitman was considered as the father of free verse free verse is a poem written without rhyme the rhythm is mostly prosodic i mean prose like or lesson like it still carries the effect of a poem free verse is used when emotions run unrestricted without a metrical arrangement of rhyming song of the open road was written for the first time in the year 1856 and was published in the leaves of grass his book his compilation this poem has 15 sections it can be divided these 15 sections can be divided into two parts section 1 to 8 and sections 9 to 15 sections 1 to 8 appreciate a metaphorical journey characterized by freedom independence and affirmation of self time and place it also appreciates wisdom of soul and not the wisdom received from schools and the symbolism in the sections is a journey of adventure and opportunity started in a democratic path and then inviting all to join him Sections 9 to 15 appreciate poet's invitation to all to join him to welcome wonderful company by joining his journey by repeating the word hello a double l o n s hello french word pronounced as hello meaning we go or let's go the stanzas given in your yog bharati is only the section 1 of the entire poem of 15 sections the four stanzas in the yog bharati book comprise section 1 out of the 15 original sections of the poem song of the open road let me give you an outline of the entire section that is section 1 the speaker of the poem is describing a trip he describes himself healthy and free and realizes that he is in complete control of his fate he chooses his own fate because of this realization he is self content and doesn't want any new gifts or fortunes because he himself is his own good fortune he does not need anything more to reach his destination on his own the earth will provide him with strength and blessings in spite of the road being paved with imperfections i mean burdens the poet has decided to take those burdens with him and deal with them as they arise it is a mutual give and take whatever he achieves from earthly bondages he is also fusing them to the world because he is a part of everything earthly and worldly what is the purpose of this journey the purpose is knowledge is a liability when you stay indoors it is only when you come out you understand all levels of people rich and poor black and white the beggar tramps democratic values linkages of love and ultimately the source of divine poetry much unseen can only be seen on the road you learn and become wiser road is the most democratic segment of a society road is a symbol of vital society making a good poetry road bears all the stress we too adopt the mutual give and take whatever we receive we fuse it to the world the number of stanzas are four unrhymed stanzas the first section only is prescribed for you in the yog bharati book with the exception of the first stanza which contains only three lines The other three stanzas contain four lines of the free verse. The last stanza of four lines is in parentheses, I mean brackets, which depicts the poet's afterthoughts and is kept aside as a stanza. It is first person narrative of the poet himself. We call it apostrophe because he is addressing to someone who is not present there at that moment. Free verse symbolizes carefree tone and goes unrestricted of a metrical arrangement during the flow of emotions. Now let us start the lesson I mean poem the poem in the book is I will read out the entire poem a foot and light hearted i take to the open road healthy free the world before me the long brown path before me leading wherever i choose henceforth i ask not good fortune i myself am good fortune henceforth i whimper no more postpone no more need nothing done with indoor complaints libraries querulous criticisms strong and content i travel the open road the earth that is sufficient i do not want the constellations any nearer 
I know they are very well where they are. I know they suffice for those who belong to them. Still, here I carry my old delicious burdens. I carry them, men and women. I carry them with me wherever I go. I swear it is impossible for me to get rid of them. I am filled with them and I will fill them in return. Now, we will talk about stanza 1. The first stanza is a foot and light-hearted I take to the open road, healthy free the world before me, the long brown path before me, leading wherever I choose. Annotation is like this. The poet has set out on an open road. He is light-hearted and open to all he is about to experience. He is not under pressure. It is he who is in control of his journey. We call it self-decision. He will choose his path which is ready to take him on his journey in every which way he desires to go. That is his goal. He sees the wall full of resources which he wants to learn to reach his goal. Brown path, I mean Kacha road, symbolizes no man-made or engineered path of concrete. He doesn't want any interference of technology here to show that he has chosen his own path, maybe the road still not taken. Stanza 2 is like this. Henceforth I ask not good fortune. I myself am good fortune. Henceforth I whimper no more, postpone no more, need nothing. Done with indoor complaints, libraries and querulous criticisms. Strong and content, I travel the open road. The annotation, he doesn't need any good luck because he is the maker of his own fate. It is exhilaration. Thrilled he is. He will no longer cry, complain or remain unhappy as he doesn't desire much. He is not building castles in the air. He has come out of his four-walled domestic politics. He got rid of a den of narrow-mindedness and negativity. He is on a road which bears wisdom more than any brainstorming debates, libraries or schools. Libraries here mean the books are not able to give him such wisdom as he is acquiring from a road. Getting away from one's familiar involvement gives one the chance to break away from conventions. Philosophies that look good in lecture rooms may fail in the open air. I mean nature is the best teacher. He sings in a free tone. It means he feels emancipated. The last stanza is, sorry, the last but one stanza is, the earth that is sufficient, I do not want the constellations any nearer. I know they are very well where they are. I know they suffice for those who belong to them. Now the annotation. He doesn't desire stardom or any name and fame to show off to others. He does not even desire to be close to those galaxies. His own goals are unique and to himself. The poet conveys his best wishes to those stars who struggle to reach there. But he himself is independent and doesn't want to be included in that galaxy. He doesn't belong to them because he doesn't need them. I mean his focus is different. He should not compare himself with them. Mother Earth is with him and that is more than sufficient. He is close to nature and the Earth. Constellations look good from afar. Means he is feeling happy and self-contented after seeing those stars. But he doesn't want to be one amongst those because he wants to be close to nature, to the Earth, to that road, that democratic path. Stanza 4, the last stanza, it is entirely written in parenthesis, I mean brackets, which goes like this. Quote, still, here I carry my old delicious burdens. I carry them, men and women. I carry them with me wherever I go. I swear it is impossible for me to get rid of them. I am filled with them and I will fill them in return. Unquote. This is the last stanza which is written in quote unquote. I mean brackets. I mean in parenthesis. Now the annotation. The poet separates himself from the world for some time. The use of parenthesis is that punctuation mark. The last stanza is an afterthought of the poet while addressing his audience. He admits that he is not without his own problems but is not worried much. He will cross his hurdles like the winding roads. A burden cannot be delicious but he carries them with him. It is paradoxical arrangement, a burden which is delicious. He is filled with burdens and in return he fills them. The speaker is stating here that his burdens do not define him, rather he accepts them and carries them with him wherever he goes. He still invites all to embark upon a journey which is symbolic and democratic. The first theme of this poem is happiness and optimism. 
He understands that the key to happiness is to be true to his ideals, his soul and his intelligence. The earth itself has the potential to teach us how to fulfill our dreams with the right amount of motivation and determination. Let us not care about the past failures and move ahead on that road. One must not give up in the middle. Winding and tortuous roads are the best examples to prove that we can reach our ultimate goals as roads take passengers to their destinations. The second theme is about goodness. The poet becomes larger and more knowledgeable by expanding himself to see the varied people, situations and things. He accepts his fellow travelers, though he might not be acceptable to them. He doesn't mind. The roads are tortuous, so are his burdens. Hence, he becomes refreshed to fill his burdens with more wisdom. I mean, he is trying to solve his problems with a different perspective. The third theme is about how to cross hurdles. The song of the open road is not straight. It teaches us that the winding roads do not complain of a shortcut. Just go step by step, mile by mile. Right? You might have heard that time-tested adage, a single step of man is a giant leap for the mankind. They take us to the destination or a goal which we set for ourselves at the start of the journey. The hurdles cannot be permanent. We need to tackle them just like the winding roads. We will never fail if we rethink it with a fresh mind as our focus is on the goal itself and not on the hurdle. The fourth and the last theme could be American democracy defined in a democratic way. A true American poet, here I mean Walt Whitman, speaks for Americans through a democratic poem by experiencing America. Diverse people, inspiring objects, true wisdom, freedom and happiness are rewards of joining the open road of democracy regardless of social standing. People of America must freely mingle with diverse people and to develop the US. What is the moral of the poem? True companionship is not possible in the indoor world of secret debasement and mortality. Indoors is a place of secret and silent despair. It is only roads where people walk with some meaning and purpose. A road is classless and the most democratic segment of a society. Road symbolizes mobility. So don't stay at one place, move ahead. Walt Whitman was the man who revolutionized American poetry. He invented a whole new poetic form and he opened up topics to a wide range that nobody else would touch. Walt Whitman was born on May 31, 1819 in West Hills, New York. His parents were of modest means and he had seven siblings. At the age of 11, Walt Whitman was pulled from school so that he could help the family support itself in the printing industry. As a result, Whitman was largely self-taught he became a voracious reader. He read widely, especially in novels. When he was 17, Whitman turned to teaching, and his first job was in a one-room schoolhouse. He taught for five years, and then in 1841, he set his sights on journalism. Walt Whitman was a volatile editor and writer. He had strong ideas about women's property rights, about immigration, and about the major issue of the day, slavery. From 1848 to 1855, Whitman began what was to become his greatest work, Leaves of Grass. His free verse, his stitching together of encyclopedic lists, completely broke with poetic and literary convention and vastly influenced poets ever after across the world. It began as a book of very few poems and grew to one over the years to contain almost 300 poems. Over his lifetime, he had seven editions of the book. During the Civil War, Whitman moved to Washington, D.C. to attend his wounded brother George. He stayed in D.C. several years, working in the paymaster's office, and volunteered visiting wounded soldiers. When he went to the hospitals, there were limbs piled up outside. He spoke with young soldiers who had witnessed the most astonishing atrocities. From his experience with the wounded during the war, he produced a small book of poems called Drum Taps. This is one of the only two accounts of the Civil War written by people who actually experienced it. Whitman published two new collections of poems in 1870, Democratic Vistas and Passage to India. Whitman was called the Bard of Democracy because all of his poems are based on the notion of a universal brotherhood. 
He thought that the possibility of America was to achieve a brotherhood that no other culture had yet been able to achieve. Whitman suffered a stroke in 1873, leaving him partially paralyzed. He moved to Camden, New Jersey, where he remained until his death on March 26, 1892. In his lifetime, Leaves of Grass was considered by many people to be a disgraceful book. But by the end of his life, he acquired the name The Good Gray Poet, as if America was finally ready in the later years to accept him as a poet. Whitman never really received the attention that he deserved during his lifetime. It was only in the 20th century that we learned how to read his poetry and understand what he accomplished. The figures of speech and exercises will be discussed in the online class and will be sent through a Google link opening Yuvak Bharti e-textbook with questions and answers. Regards, have a nice day. Thank you.